today we're going to be talking about the differences between Asian and Western culture and postnatal care. So postnatal care, as everybody knows, is how you take care of your body after you've had a baby. So one big issue in Korea was when Kate Middleton, the Duchess of Cambridge, and the wife of Prince Williams came out only after 10 hours of giving birth, wearing high heels and looking totally fine. And all the Korean uh, mothers were all saying, wow, is that even possible? Should she even be wearing high heels when she's just given birth? And this sort of shows like cultural differences of how people react to the Western culture and how they take care of their bodies after they've given birth. Number one thing you will see for postnatal care in Korea is seaweed soup. <coughs> so as I mentioned this before in my previous video and that yummy thing that I just showed you with the seaweed soup and the rice cakes. Mm. Well, that's actually eaten, supposedly eaten, breakfast, lunch, and dinner like for the next two weeks after you've given birth. So seaweed soup for breakfast, seaweed soup for lunch, seaweed soup for dinner, seaweed soup, seaweed soup everywhere. So after you've given childbirth, apparently all these wives get really, really sick of seaweed soup. Um, and they don't even want to see it. Actually, it's very nutritious for you and doctors do recommend eating seaweed soup because it is it is very high in iodine, a lot of different nutrients, and it's hot and it's it has a lot of water in it because it's soup. So, um, you know, you always need to be hydrated. So soup helps you be hydrated other than also drinking water. So I think it's sort of like apparently it fulfills many conditions why it might be one of the recommended food that you should be eating after postnatal care. Uh, but the thing is, doctors do recommend not eat too much of it because of course you don't want to just put your body in a biased position and just be getting one nutrient or nutrition from one source of a meal and one source of food. The different thing you'll see in Korea with postnatal care is that everyone is told to sort of avoid cold. Cold anything. Cold food, cold environment, cold atmosphere, cold air, cold things, cold guys, cold whatever. But you know, in the West it's totally fine. You can have cold juice. It's totally fine to be in a cool environment. You're okay to have a cold shower right after you've given birth so you feel more refreshed. Just the whole cultural stigma is if you do eat cold stuff or expose yourself in the cold environment that your bones that's been sort of like separated from each other, you know, sort of like pried open from each other, won't come back to its place quickly or won't come back properly and in the long run you'll have like bone aches and your joints will hurt and things like that. This is not sort of only secluded to Korean culture, but I mean probably Asian cultures are very heavily influenced by China. So everyone's sort of got little bits and pieces of, you know, Asian medicine going on and Asian culture all sort of stemming from China. So even in China or Mongolia, um, people tend to sort of stay away from cold stuff. Um, and the highly recommended procedure is to sort of stay quarantined for the next two weeks. Um, you know, stay in a warm place, keep yourself comfortable, wrapped in a blanket, make sure not to move too much so all your bones heal properly. Okay, so those are some differences that you will see between Asian culture and Western culture for postnatal care. Apparently, Japan is an anomaly. So Jap Japan doesn't really follow the rest of sort of the Asian customs for postnatal care, which is stay away from cold stuff, you know, a seaweed soup is a Korean thing, but you know, stay away from like cold stuff, keep your body warm, don't try to move too much. Um, apparently Japan does not follow that, as it's actually more closer to US or European customs due to its uh, fast westernization. Um, so maybe you'll have a different experience when you're in a Japanese hospital and giving birth and when you're in a Korean uh, hospital and you're giving birth. But apparently it's very, very similar if you are having a baby in a Korean hospital and a Chinese one. But a lot of customs in Korean hospitals are changing, so maybe by the time you see this video and by the time you come to a Korean hospital, it might be totally different from what I'm talking about. But I'm pretty sure the seaweed soup is still going to be there. 
everyone loves seaweed soup. I'm totally generalizing here, so don't take it line for line. But basically, you know, all these different cultures in the end has one purpose, which is to give comfort for these women who's who went through hell to have babies. Like, just imagine having that huge baby head coming out from that place. Like, ooh, you know, like that's painful. Please respect your moms. Uh, please respect women who just had birth because they just went through hell. Um, and probably if you're a man, you cannot imagine having that thing come out of your body. So let's all love our mommies and love all women and also love the men who had to get bold and have his hair all torn out of his head to endure the labor pain that his wife or his girlfriend or his partner had to go through. I hope this video was some good insight between the differences between Western and Korean culture for postnatal care. If you have any comments you want to say about some of your insights from your cultures, from your countries, please write them below. I would love to read all of them. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!